So I'm going to start by introducing myself and then um, we will dive deeper into the subject. So, do, okay. So I need to, I can share my, I am the one sharing my screen, Ellen, right? Yeah, that's okay. We can see your screen. Okay. Can you see it? Yes, right. yes, we can. Okay, okay. So let's go. Um, so as Andrea just told you, I am a French and sustainable water stylist based in LA. And my mission is to help women feel and look their best. Through my stunning, my conscious stunning process, I help women to define and understand their personal style, but also maximize what, what, they, what they already have in the closet and develop a conscious um, wardrobe to make a positive impact on the environment, but also people's life when it comes to garment uh, workers. You can follow me on Instagram at Sustainable Wardrobe Stylist. If you have any question afterward, after the workshop, feel free to shoot me an email at contact at shinesyawal.com. And if you want to learn more about me and what I do, my website is www.shinesyawal.com. So first, um, what is conscious styling? So there are probably a few definitions of conscious styling. Some might be more rigid than others, but this is my definition as a personal stylist who work with women who have a different level of interest and commitment to sustainable fashion. As, um, as a stylist, it is my mission to help women who are interested in transitioning from um, slow fashion, to, from fast fashion to slow fashion and um, coach them on how to develop a conscious wardrobe. I like the concept of conscious styling. I mean, when it comes to conscious um, wardrobe, I like the concept of conscious styling because I truly believe that understanding our personal style is one of the most um, important and sustainable way to develop a conscious wardrobe. If you think about it, once you know about your style, once you know about what fits you, what you love and why, you're gonna be able to fill your closet with pieces, um, item of clothing you love. And if you love them, you're gonna be able to wear them again and again and repeat and mix and match and twist and yeah, it will be, you will enjoy that. Um, it's also about making conscious choices when it comes to how you dress. So maximizing what you already have, it's definitely key, um, as well as caring and take care of, um, take good care of your clothes by washing um, cold, by maximizing the number of wear people wearing, also by focusing on eco-friendly fabrics rather than synthetic fabrics. And when it comes to shopping, intention is key. Um, no matter if you buy or shop new secondhand or if you rent, buying less, buying better is definitely important. Um, buying from brands who care about how the clothes are made, who are the people who are making them and how it's impacting the environment is fundamental. And the last thing I always tell my clients is buy what you need and what you need. So really conscious styling, it's about your style, but it's also about, about the, the conscious choices you're gonna make to dress your body and shopping what you need with intention. Okay. Um, so we were just talking about the importance of defining and understanding a personal style to develop a conscious wardrobe. I believe that a style, it's much more than putting on clothes together. It's all about find, finding the right clothes that's gonna match your body, of course, but also your personality and your lifestyle. Because if you think about it, 
um, if you like your clothes, if you love what you wear, then you're gonna feel great and confident. So the question is how to develop a personal style. My first recommendation is to know and love, of course, um, our body. Because having, um, having a good knowledge of um, your body structure, your silhouette is very helpful to dress and choose the right clothing that will balance and flatter your body. And again, if you feel wonderful in an outfit, you will, um, yeah, you will feel mentally great. Um, and you won't feel the need that to look for something else or to shop for something else. Um, the, the same with colors. Oh, no, so let me go back here. Um, I'm gonna take the example of the little black dress. Let's say you, are, you know that you look more like an hourglass shape. So this little purple one. Once you're aware of that, um, you probably know that the styling uh, objective when you're more like an hourglass is to put the focus on your waist. So whenever you're gonna have to shop for this little black dress, you're gonna look for brands, but you're gonna also look for fit that will flatter this body. Um, there are a lot of chances. Th since that you put a lot of thinking in it, there are a lot of chances that you're gonna find the perfect dress. And if you find the perfect dress, you're gonna love it and you're gonna wear it again and again and you're gonna repeat and you're gonna dress up, dress down. It will be a conscious styling choice. On the other hand, if you're not sure about what makes you feel good and what flatters your body, you might go shopping or renting or buying a secondhand black dress, one, maybe two, three, four, five, until you find the one, um, which is great. But what about the six other black dresses you bought that are probably sitting in the back of your closet? We cannot consider those as conscious styling choices, you know? So that's why knowing your body is so important to build this conscious wardrobe. The same with colors. Are you, what are the colors that make you glow? Are you more a warm skin tone or a cool skin tone? If you have, if your closet is filled with colors that make you glow, that make you shine, there are a lot of chances that you're gonna be excited about wearing those clothes. On the other hand, if half of your closet is filled with colors that wash you out, um, you're not gonna be very excited. And those clothes will probably sit in your closet. Um, you won't wear them, which doesn't make it very sustainable. Um, and also good colors, like the fit of your clothes, but the colors, there is a real impact on your confidence. So I really think that picking the right colors according to your skin tone is very important. Um, and the big one is find your style. What is your personal style? Are you more natural relaxed, like this lady with this um, off-white uh, jumpsuit? Are you more classic traditional or maybe artistic creative, a dramatic edgy girl or romantic, romantic feminine? Um, maybe you are very into the alluring chic style or maybe modern chic. The point here, it's not to put yourself in a box. Um, maybe your style is a combination of, of two or three. I am more classic, but I like the modern chic. Um, and sometimes I like to be edgy with um, my leather jacket. Oh, let me admit. Oh. Uh, so finding your personal style, it's also part of knowing who you are. Once um, you know that, it will be easy to build the outfit that will make you feel great and glow and um, confident. Okay. Um, so you know, now you know what is your, what your body shape is. You discovered your colors and you have a good sense of your personal style. So you're gonna be able to build this conscious closet filled with clothes you love. Um, but how to develop 
this wardrobe according to how to develop uh, this wardrobe according to your personal style. Um, <clears throat> so the first um, recommendation is to edit your closet. Get rid of everything that does not fit, that is too small, too big. Um, all those clothes that have been sitting in the back of your closet that you didn't wear for the past six months, depending on the season, get rid of it. Everything that is not matching your personal style, everything that is not making feel like yourself, just get rid of it. Get rid of it, um, yes. Clean, cleaning, yes. But please do it in a sustainable way, meaning work on a closing reuse plan if you can. Uh, I'm sure some of those pieces you're not wearing might be um, sold, might be donated, might be recycled. Uh, maybe you can repair some of them. Um, it's very important to do it in a sustainable way. So once you've did the inventory of the closet, your closet will be filled with pieces you love and pieces you will be excited um, about wearing. And as soon, I mean, once, you know, your closet becomes the dream closet, um, then you will be totally fine by making the most of what you already have, by repeating your, outf your outfits, mixing, matching, um, and twisting. Um, this is where the magic uh, will start, trust me. Um, also try to, I mean, a conscious, wad a conscious wardrobe is also filled with clothes made from eco-friendly materials. So as much as you can try to focus on natural fabrics rather than synthetic fabrics, it's better for, your, for the environment, but it's also better for your body. Choose quality over than quantity. Um, do not be shy to invest money in pieces you love, in pieces you know that you will be able to wear it again and again. Uh, and quality is good, but of course it's very important to keep your clothes in good condition. So it will extend the life cycle of your clothes and um, it will allow you to slow down your slow fashion consumption. Now, one of the questions I often have is, is a conscious wardrobe a capsule wardrobe? Um, sometimes conscious wardrobe and capsule wardrobe are made out to be the same. I don't necessarily agree with that because I think um, we don't need to own just 10 or 20 pieces of clothing to be a conscious consumer. We are allowed to have the number of clothing of item that works for, uh, for us, for our style and our lifestyle. For example, I live here in California. Um, I can pretty much wear the same clothes and same wardrobe from let's say April to October because we have no season. While um, I used to live in New York, in New York, they are for season. And trust me, you're not going to wear the same clothes in January than you're going to wear in, in August. No. So I used to have a bigger wardrobe in New York than I have here in LA. Um, but it doesn't make me a bad consumer or a bad personal stylist or bad fashionista or whatever. No, it's just, you know, as long as you, wear, you love what you have, um, and you pick those clothes with intention and you wear them on a daily basis, you are good. You're already, already part of this slow fashion uh, lifestyle and journey. Um, so I do not believe in the capsule wardrobe, but I strongly believe that a conscious wardrobe starts with foundational pieces. What is a foundational piece? What is a core piece? So I pulled a selection for you. This is based on my personal experience. And this, also, this is also what I found out to be working pretty well for my clients. Um, if the selection doesn't fit your style or your lifestyle, it's totally fine. Feel free to raise your hand if you have any question. I will be more than happy to, to answer it. So. Um, 
a cor what is a corpus? So a corpus, a corpus, it is something good quality that's gonna last for a long time, no matter how many times you're wearing it. Um, they are usually good quality. Um, yeah, they are usually good quality. Sorry about that. I just said that. But um, they are usually easy to mix and match with each other, but they are also essential to maximize the rest of your wardrobes when it comes to accessories and statement pieces. Uh, the statement pieces in my um, language are the pieces that are have a little bit more personality that tells a little bit more about who you are. So those basics will help mix um, those statement pieces together. And to finish, they are usually easy to dress up and dress down depending on the occasion. So here is my selection. Um, I always recommend a classic pair of denim, a versatile t-shirt, a, layer, a layer, layering piece, some comfortable shoes, a dressy top, and your signature accessories. Okay, let's start with the first one, the classic pair of jeans. I know later um, it's been a lot about, you know, the skinny jean is out and the low waist is back, blah, 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 blah. I don't care about that. I think it's some fashion bullshit. I don't want to, um, I don't want to deal with that. And I don't want my clients to feel, um, to feel bad about all those trends. Um, the classic pair of jeans doesn't have to be high-waisted. It doesn't have to be straight. It can be skinny. The important thing is it has to be easily um, dressed up or dressed down. It has to be comfortable. This is the point of the classic pair of jeans. I usually recommend a medium to darker wash if you want to wear it for work. It's better, like, depending where you work, but, um, you know, for some casual chic dress code, corporate dress code, the darker wash is um, better than the lighter wash. Try to stay away from distressed because it might look a little bit too, um, too casual. But as you can see in the different pictures, it's something pretty easy to dress up with a colorful top, some heels. If you don't wear heels like me, go for some loafers and a blazer it will make you look more it will make you look more um modern chic on the casual side you can match it with some sneakers as in a sweater or if it's a warmer weather go for a white tee and some slides so with one pair of denim let's assume this is the same you can see that we have the same piece of clothing, but four different style. And if you repeat the same jeans um, three to four times during the week, if you know how to mix, match, and twist, nobody will notice this in the same pair of jeans. I wear my Levi's probably three to four times per week. And nobody never told me, oh, you're wearing the same jeans. No, everybody tell me, oh, your headband look good, or your shoes are great, you know? The, People are pretty positive about that. Then the Versailles t-shirt. Again, the Versailles t-shirt doesn't have to be white, like we can often read on blog posts, you need your white tee. No, you don't need a white tee. You need a tee that is versatile, a tee that is comfortable, that you're gonna be able to throw on pretty easily without sinking too much. This is the point of the Versailles t-shirt. Um, it doesn't have to be oversized. If you have broad shoulders or a bigger chest, the oversized fit might not look the best on you. Um, so pick the t-shirt that fits you, the colors you like. If you are a mom, the white, it's not the most practical colors, you know? Um, go for something uh, short, you can go short sleeve, long sleeve, V-neck, boat neck, crew neck, again, depending on your shape. Once you have found this t-shirt, then you will be able to maximize it for some casual looks with some sneakers and jeans or shorts. Um, on the dressy side, you can, you could, you know, it would be easy to match it with a skirt and some slides 
or like I do um, with like a really vintage linen uh, short and some block heel sandals. So again, it's one T and it can be pink. It can be, it doesn't have to be neutral. Like as long as you love it so much, it's good. Um, one T and four styles, but there are many more. Sorry. The, la the layering piece. It doesn't have to be the black blazer. Let's, I am very clear about that. The layering piece, it's like your best friend. It's like the blanket, the comfortable blanket you're gonna grab at the last minute or the one you're gonna travel with in the plane, you know? It brings you, it's warm and it's comfortable. The black blazer, again, if you have um, a large bust and uh, large shoulders, the shoulder pads are not, the same. Um, there are a lot of chances that this black blazer won't make you look amazing. Instead, you might feel better in <clears throat> a leather jacket, a denim jacket, or maybe a duster, or it's also called a um, sweater jacket, or maybe this is the plaid blazer that will be um, that will fit your body and your your lifestyle. Um, the comfortable shoes. It can be the white sneakers, um, the loafers, the slides, the heels, whatever works for your lifestyle, whatever you are comfortable with, just go for it. Um, you know, white sneakers are great because they can match a denim, a skirt, a shirt, a short. Um, the slides the same. The boots, the black boots during winter, you can probably wear them from Monday to Sunday, depending on um, what you do. So it's all about the comfort because if you pick a shoe that is not comfortable and that hurts your feet, um, the chances that you're not going to wear them very much are pretty high. The dressy top. So the dressy top is like your best friend, you know, it's not, it's a friend, but there is something special. So the specialty, the details can be the neckline, um, the embellishment on the sleeves, the print, or, you know, it can also be classic, but this is basically the best friend you're going to call whenever you have a last minute date or, um, you know, a last minute birthday party. This is something you're going to pull out of your wardrobe and you know you will look polished, you know you will look put together, and you know you will feel good. It's a little bit, it's definitely dressier than the a classic t-shirt um but yes it's your best friend that will boost your mood and that will be bring you the confidence you need for the dinner the party you're going to the signature accessory um so i think this is very important more particularly when you are you live on outfit repeating and you have your uniforms the signature accessory will help accessories will help you to bring a little bit more personality to your looks um you don't you don't have to pick one you can have one two three i used to be i am still big on vintage belt i cannot leave my house without a belt because i feel kind of naked um but later um lately you know i've been wearing a lot of you know necklaces that i used to have like this one is my mom got it for 40th birthday 25 years ago um, and I just put it on and I play with it. I am also big on uh, vintage gold loops. And um, yeah, it helps polish my style. It's something um, easy. Um, the scarf, it's also great. You can play it, play with it, you know, as a head scarf or as um, like around your, your neck or maybe as a belt. Um, so this is definitely something that should be part of this, um, this wardrobe. Do you have any question for me? No? Well, okay. Um, so once you've identified those core pieces that work for you and your style, you're going to be able to um, create your outfit and repeat. Um, and here comes the big question. Charlene, how do I repeat an outfit without looking like I already wore the same outfit last week? So this is a good question. And there are actually a few 
styling um, styling tips to make you like to make you look you know different from one day to another one. But the first thing I want to tell you is that we should be proud to be outfit repeater. There is nothing wrong about it. Um, actually, repeating an outfit means a lot of things. It means that you know your style, you know exactly, um, you know what you love, you feel comfortable in the clothes you have, and this is pretty amazing. Uh, there is nothing to be ashamed of. Um, today, this is like today wearing what you have, what we have in our closet is actually the right things to do for our planet. But I am a mom of three and yeah, this is the best thing I can do from a styling perspective for, for the future of um, my kids. Um, so please be proud to wear the same jeans Monday, Wednesday, and maybe Saturday. It's totally fine. Um, and here are you, how you can make this outfit repeating glamorous. So my first recommendation is to choose a uniform. Um, it can be, and it doesn't have to be one uniform, it can be two or three, um, but let's say if you pick a t-shirt and a jeans, um, this, is some, this is a uniform one you can wear on Monday and Wednesday. Um, and maybe your other uniform is a maxi dress. So you're gonna do maybe your jeans and t-shirt Monday, Wednesday and Friday, and then you're gonna play with maxi dress um, on Tuesday and Thursday. So those are your uniform. Now what you need to um, do and what I recommend is to master the accessorize. Um, and this is how you're gonna bring the twist. This is how you're gonna make it, your outfit feel new and fresh. Um, so the accessor, I mean, the accessorize, yes. Look at what you have, look what you love. I am not big on bracelets, so I'm not gonna put bracelets just to um, master the accessorize, but I like earrings, I like necklace, um, scarf, yes, and belt. And it's enough to make an outfit look different, trust me. Um, and also the jacket, like if you have like a jacket or blazers, this is like layering, it's also a good option to make your uniform look different from one day to another. Use the power of colors. Maybe grab this yellow sweater um, to make your jeans look a little bit different. Um, it will definitely boost your mood. If you're not into colorful clothes, you can wear maybe a lipstick. It doesn't have to be red like French women. It can be pink, it can be orange, but play with um, colors. Downgrade your wardrobe. Do not wait for the special occasion to take this silk slip dress out of your closet. Take it out, take, take, it, take it out now and wear it tomorrow. Play with it. Um, wear a denim jacket, put some Converse, um, a casual bag and it will work well. The same with this fancy blazer. Uh, maybe not a sweatpants if you want to dress it down, but maybe a distressed jeans and some flat shoes or some slides will work pretty well. Also use social media as inspiration. I know most of the time we tend to follow um, people and account who have a um, pretty similar style as we have, um, which is great, but try to get out of your personal like styling comfort zone. Um, I am not really like a bohemian, um, romantic type of girl. I mean, I am, but not from my style perspective. But I ended up following this lady. She's a mom, um, an amazing mom, and she's very like bohemian chic. And there is a way, like she masters the headband, the scarf, um, the head scarf. She does it so beautifully. Uh, it probably takes her five minutes when it takes me 15, but it's okay. And um, some days I will wear my white t-shirt and my jeans, and this is my mommy uniform, and I am very comfortable and confident about it. But some days I will, you know, I will add, I would like um, 
you know, like a different twist and to, to elevate this, this uniform. So I, I started doing this uh, scar uh, head scarf things. And yes, I go to school, pick up my daughter. People won't notice my jeans I was wearing like two days before. They will notice my um, head scarf. Uh, and it makes a huge difference like from um, an outfit perspective, but also from a mindset perspective. You feel fresh, you feel new, you feel um, trendy, even if, you know, it's, it's not about being trendy or not. It's about feeling yeah, fresh, I would say. Um, and the last thing I would like to say is have fun. Uh, play with what you have, mix, match, repeat, bring a twist. There is nothing wrong by creating unexpected looks because personal style, it's not about being matchy-matchy. It's really about being who you are as long as you're comfortable with the image you are sending to the world, you are great. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Charlene, for this. So welcome. So welcome. It, was a, it was a great presentation with a lot of tips. And uh, guys, we still have a couple minutes left. So this is your chance to ask an incredible stylist any tips any doubts that you have um how to start with the with your own sustainable wardrobe um so please in case anyone has a question uh, raise your hand on or unmute yourself even yes even if the, the you have questions who that are not related directly related to the presentation um Anything that is, you know, is related to conscious styling and conscious wardrobe, feel free to ask. All right, I have a question. Mm -hmm. So I want to know how uh, conscious styling differs from regular styling. Like, what is the difference in terms of clients? Like, do they specially ask for a conscious stylist, or they ask for a stylist and then you tell them more about the conscious options? Um. So I would say 80% of my clients are interested in um, conscious sustainable styling. Some of them already have a very strong sustainable lifestyle. Some women don't have. Um, but something I noticed in all my clients is that, yes, they are done um, constantly shopping for things that do not fit, that they are not happy about. Um, and yes, they are ready to make changes to build a wardrobe that get, they're going to love and cherish for um, maybe not forever because you always need to refresh, but for a long time. And a, a wardrobe that will bring them confidence because when you didn't found, find the style and the clothes that fits you, um, there's a huge impact on your confidence. Um, so I think styling, it's all about um, confidence. Um, so, and this is something I help my clients with for sure. Did I answer your question? Yes, yes, you did. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Uh, any other questions, guys? Uh, yes, I do have a question. Go ahead. Yes. So my question is, um, what would be your advice to someone who's looking to transform their wardrobe um, in a conscious manner without, you know, over cons consuming, I guess, with um, buying more clothes? Um, yeah. So I would say first, um, like, you need to know what your personal style is and what you like and what does work for you and what does not work for you. Once you, you did this work, um, let me admit this person. Once you've done this work, um, then it's all about, then start by editing your closet and, and keep what you, keep what you, what works for your style and your body and your lifestyle um, and focus on those see what how many where i mean 
see how you can maximize those pieces by mixing and max, ma matching. And then if you feel like, you know, there are some pieces Good. missing. So there's some, 20 minutes on this Zoom I'm going to listen to. Yeah, sure. uh, Tiffany, could you? Oh. I just, I just mute, muted her. Um, and then if you need to do some shopping to complete, uh, complement what you already have, it's fine. But then first, know your style, know what works for you, then edit your closet and um and then yeah take it from there perfect thank you so much You're welcome guys we have uh, time for maybe one or two more questions so anybody else and if you want to, to ask a question in french if you're more comfortable because i know there are a few french um Ladies here, feel free to ask a question in French and I will answer in English, but I understand the French, so you can, you can go ahead. Ok, je suis plus à l'aise en français qu'en anglais, donc je vais poser ma question. Pas de souci. <rire> Tout à l'heure, tu disais que c'était important de connaître et sa morphologie et connaître les couleurs qui pouvaient matcher avec notre physique, mais justement, comment savoir quelles couleurs nous vont bien, plutôt les couleurs chaudes, plutôt les couleurs froides, etc. Okay, so I'm going to translate and then I will answer. So Emeline was asking me, um, yeah, earlier on I was discussing the fact that it's important to know your silhouette and you know your colors. Um, but how do you do that, right? This is the question, Emeline. How do you know? You? So basically for your body shape, it's pretty easy. Um, if you have a measuring tape at home, you're going to meet, there are three points you want to measure. Your, uh, let me admit. Um, you will measure your shoulders your waist and um, your hips. You're gonna end up with three numbers um, and then yeah. um, you're gonna end up with three numbers and it will give you your pretty much the shape of your body. Um, American women tend to be more rectangle. French women, we most of the time we have larger hips so we are more like triangle. But yeah, do this work first and um, it should give you a great idea of um, what your silhouette looks like. And in terms of colors, I mean, it's a whole process, but um, a tip I can share with you is, um, you know, if you can you look at your veins, um, you can place your palm facing up, you look at your veins. If your veins um, are more like um, blue or like, yeah, there are three different colors, um, the blue, the red, the yellow. If they are more like blue, it means that you might be more um, a cool skin tone. While yellow, you are more warm. If you're red, it might mean that you can, you're probably a mix of the two. And once you know that, um, you can Google warm skin tone, uh, cool skin tone, and it will give you an idea of um, the color palette that, you know, but you can also, you know, sometimes I have clients who will tell me, I love this stuff so much. I like the fit, I like the fabric, but there is something wrong. And it's actually the color. The color is washing the client out, like her face out, or the color makes her look older. And yeah, once you know that, you will probably have the answer to um, many of your questions. And also if you tend to wear more gold or silver, if you tend to wear more gold, it might mean that you're more like a warm skin tone and silver, you might um, be a more like a cool skin tone. Yeah. Merci. De rien. Okay, I think that maybe we can answer uh, Erika's question and then we can uh, finish the session. Mm -hmm. uh, just Christine that just sent a message uh, that, she, that you misread the time zone. No worries, we are going to... Uh, uh, to publish the, the whole presentation on our social media channels. So just keep, uh, keep an eye on YouTube and on Instagram and you can see the whole presentation. So go ahead, Erika, you can unmute yourself and ask Charlene. We cannot hear you, Erika.
No. No, still not. Uh, if you want to as well, you can write it down and then I can read it for you. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so Erica says, just to make sure I understood about the skin colors, I think it is a problem I have when styling. What is the wording to research more about it? Um, what is the word, like, um, I mean, skin tone, um, what is my, uh, what is, if you Google it, what, what is my um, skin tone? What colors are more flattering for my skin tones? Um, it's color, color consulting from a professional perspective. Um, yeah, but you can also do, you can start doing the job in, um, at home. Like if you have a mirror and some uh, natural light, you can play, you can pick maybe um, a piece of clothing that is more like a dark blue and then black and a white, off white, and you might start seeing a difference now. I think she's uh, typing her answer. <laughs> Yeah, also if you Google, there are a few, I mean, there are a few books about coloring. Um, and I will be I will be happy to share it um maybe on my Instagram. I can do a post about it uh later next week, um, about the power of colors. But try tomorrow. I see, I mean she has like a I love this mustard marigold top. Like colors can definitely boost your mood. It's also why people are happy in Christmas. They wear a lot of red. So red, it's like you feel with when you wear red, you feel powerful and confident, you know, and happy. So yeah, I will share some resources on my Instagram in the next coming week, uh, in the next uh, next week. So keep um, your eyes open. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys, for your uh, very valuable questions, and thank you so much, Charlene, as well. Uh, yeah. For attending to this, for for giving uh, giving a little bit of your Saturday morning for this um, amazing presentation, we appreciate it a lot. On My behalf pleasure. of the fashion movement, uh, so with this we get to the end of the event. Thank you, everyone, for coming, and uh, stay tuned for the presentation uh, on our social media and of any upcoming events during the next months. Okay.